The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up. Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, Go your way, your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. In that first reading, we hear the prophet Jeremiah. Now, you probably already know that Jeremiah lived about 620 BC, something like that, and you're probably well aware of the pivotal event in salvation history for the Jewish people called the Babylonian exile that transpired in 587 BC. All those dates and things are probably at the tip of your minds and meditated on, the, on, on them daily, right? But the idea is this, that <clears throat> Jeremiah, at the beginning of his job as a prophet or his call that he discerned at a young age, he was only like 22 years old, I think, and he was under the king Josiah, who in that time was one of the good kings. He was really trying to help Israel walk the way that God, that God was inviting them to walk. But he died in battle, and then they got a bad king, and Jeremiah had his work cut out for him. He was trying to get the king to follow Israel and not give over to idolatry and live for God and not in the ways of the world. He warned this king, but the king would have none of it. And sadly, this led to the great Babylonian exile in 587 BC, near the end of Jeremiah's life. <clears throat> but that didn't stop Jeremiah and, and God from giving Jeremiah these great words of hope. That first reading is talking about how the people will come back that God has a plan for you and that your life is significant. No matter how insignificant the devil might think your life is, get you to believe that your life is, it's a lie. We have access to a thing called formed.org on the internet. If you just sign up, I think you go under Holy Family or St. John's might be there as well, but you sign up, give them an email, and that gives you access to all these wonderful things. It's like Netflix for Catholics. But one of the series on this is called The Search. And I've been using the first session at my baptismal classes and different things. And I had one just recently. Um, a mother and her daughter came to the baptismal class. And I used the first episode to show that, um, just as an introdu introduction. And it just raises the question, what do you seek? It's done very well. It's not preachy or anything. And... <clears throat> What happens is, the, the comment at the, nearly the very beginning, he, he just says, you know what, you are going to die. And then they show this, this cemetery, and they show all these tombstones with the dates, uh, the, the birth and the, the end date, but then it focuses on the dash. And the dash is our life. It's what we do between our birth and our death that make all the difference in the world. And God has great plans for you. Well, to make a long story short, it was so moving for the, the mother, and she said, Father, why have you told us about this? Why, why? I said, I said it a lot. 
<laughs> but it's amazing how hard it is to take advantage of these things. So form.org, you can sign up or sign in actually, and you sign or you sign up, and then it will ask you parish or organization. Then you say organization, and then you'll find Holy Family in South Bend or St. John the Baptist. Either one works because we, we joined it together there. And then it will ask for an email, it gives you access to great things. But what I'm saying is we really need to build our capacity to read the signs of the times, right? The thing about a prophet is oftentimes people think that a prophet is somebody who God whispers in the, into their ear and tells them exactly what to say. And God can do that. He does speak like that sometimes. But more often than not, the prophets could just read the signs of the times. They could recognize that people aren't following God. They're, they're not listening to him. And that bodes trouble for us. The only reason why God gives us commands or rules or laws is because he's looking out for us. You're all well aware of the t-shirt that I have. It says on the front, sin is stupid. And on the back it says, don't do stupid. Sin harms us. That's why it's sinful. God knows exactly what's good for us. And as we conform our minds and our hearts to his will, we spare ourselves from a great deal of suffering and pain. <clears throat> In that second reading from Hebrews... Many people don't think Paul wrote it. Maybe it was a student of Paul or somebody in the Pauline community. But the point of the book of Hebrews is trying to help the Jewish people understand this transition from animal sacrifice to the new sacrifice of Christ. It talks of the priest Melchizedek, who was way before the Levitical priesthood. And Melchizedek, if you look at the biblical narrative, he lived in the time of Abraham, but some of the fathers of the church think that Shem, who was the son of Noah, was actually Melchizedek, who became the king of Salem, and it was he who offered bread and wine. And so the book of Hebrews is trying to make sense of why we, as the Christian church that Jesus established, still have priests, still offer sacrifice, but it's the on only the one sacrifice of Christ. We don't repeat the sacrifice of Christ, but we, we do it once. Jesus did it once. But what we do when we celebrate this Eucharist is we make present that one sacrifice of Christ that he offered once and for all. In fact, when Jesus says, do this in memory of me, the word memory comes from the Greek word anamnesis, which comes from the Hebrew word zikaron, which literally kind of has this sense, we rip across the fabric of space and time and we make present that one event that happened on the cross and the resurrection. This was the understanding the Jewish people have when they celebrate the Passover meal, when they celebrate the Seder meal. It's not just a calling to mind, but it's a making present. So really what, what it's meaning when Jesus says, do this in memory of me, he's saying, do this to make me present. And in the gospel, we hear how Jesus gave sight to Bartimaeus. And Bartimaeus cried out and said, oh, Lord, have pity on me. And they were giving him a hard time. They were saying, shut up, get away from him, don't bother him. But it didn't stop him to seek the Lord. Jesus, have, have, Jesus of Nazareth, have pity on me. Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And Jesus healed him. Did you notice that he said, go your own way. Your faith has saved you. He didn't say, hey, come follow me. He said, go your own way. Your faith has saved you. But what did Bartimaeus do? He followed Jesus. That's the invitation that we all have. And through baptism and confirmation, we've received those graces to follow Jesus and to be today's prophetic voice in a world that needs to hear it. A new kingdom of love and peace. A kingdom that values life and isn't attached to material things is driven to be a good steward of our environment and to do all these wonderful things, to look out for the poor and the impoverished, so that they too may one day be able to focus not on material things, but on the things that last for all eternity. Do we really want to see that clearly? There is so much spiritual blindness today. People can't see what is true, good, and beautiful. There's a clinical psychiatrist who's very famous called Jordan Peterson. And he's a great person to refer people to, to have them take a look at their podcast because he's not religious. People won't dismiss him out of hand because he's religious. He's a very 
authentic man, and he says he strives to live as though he believes in God. I really am impressed by how he explained that. But he's trying to look at the world in, in just simple ways. And he, he told, and, and he's so clear at expressing, and I found this to be very interesting, and, and just test this with your own experience. Those who are radically ideologues, ideologues, okay, either far left or far right, they don't have the, the ability to joke. They can't make fun of themselves. They can't relax. They're always uptight and upset. And when we're balanced, we can look at ourselves and say, God, you know, let's laugh, let's joke. We're not perfect. Let's be able to poke fun at each other without being offended. That's how we build this social contract in our world. To try and recognize that there is a truth and we're very, very well served if we are insightful enough to grasp it. Do we want to see things clearly as they are? Can we, like Bartimaeus, say, Lord, I want to see with spiritual eyes, not only physical eyes. That's really what is at the heart of all the problems in our world. People are too quick to be offended and very, very slow to forgive, especially mistakes that were made generations ago. We can't change those mistakes, but we can learn from them and grow in our capacity to love each other and see everyone as a child of God, at least in potential. I often will tell people, try and see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, especially the jerks of the world. Because if you can do that, there's a good chance that they might be able to see the face of Christ in you. With our compassion, with our love, with our understanding. And this is hard. I was driving to anoint someone the other night. It was rainy and my <coughs> probably should change my windshield wipers. It was kind of hard to see and there was this truck and it was seemingly parked in the middle lane uh, on 933 up there. And it was just sitting there, you know, and so I drive by it and, and get in front of him because my turn was coming up. And then the guy gets seemingly really upset and, you know, whips around me and, and beeps his horn and, and maybe I didn't see something. Maybe I was wrong. But why are people so on edge? Let us pray that when somebody does something like that, and I think I did this, I, I, I think I said a prayer for him because it, you know, I might have said, you jerk or something like that. But, but you know, then, then we pray for each other. We're all wounded. We're all broken. We all need healed. We all need to see more clearly. Let us pray that we're not blinded by ideology, either right or left, but we see as Christ sees. And if we do that, we will know the joy of the master. Like the psalmist said, Lord, you've done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Because when we recognize what God has done for us, we are filled with joy, even amidst suffering and challenges and the crosses that we've been called to carry. Our faith is a beautiful faith because it's true. I'm betting my life on it. And I invite you to do the same. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us stand as we profess our faith in the only God who can save. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of the Father. Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we bring our prayers of intercession before the Lord. For the church, that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all peoples, and that she, she may be a beacon of hope in these difficult times, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations throughout the world, that they may never be motivated by greed or self-interest, but rather work for all that is true, good, and beautiful, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that we may be inspired by the truth of the gospel to share the good news so many may return to the practice of their faith and be fed and healed by the sacraments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Walter and Reba Kilmer, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For more vocations to the priesthood, religious life, holy matrimony, and the dedicated single life, so that all may live out their vocation in fidelity and a deep faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may long to see as Bartimaeus and use our sight to serve the kingdom of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God and through the intercessions of our Blessed Mother supernaturally intervene and heal our nation and our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that they may experience the fullness of peace and joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all corruption in our world be uncovered, both in the church and outside her ranks, and that those responsible for it lose their power or be converted so that we can have leaders who respect life, religious liberty, and all that is in accord with natural law. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The offertory hymn can be found in the ritual song hymnal, number 804, unless a grain of wheat, number 804. <laughs> 